What's up, Police Squad? Dieter here back again with another messy feature episode. As you can clearly see, we have changed the um, layout of the video footage. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, well, we are starting to upload messy feature to YouTube. So if you want to check it out, go to YouTube Elite Gentro, and there you will have the last episode and this one. If you're still con if you're still watching this on Spotify or any other platform that doesn't involve video, well, stay here because you're still going to enjoy it as much as always. So, today we have our first ever guest on the Messy Feature Podcast. Mario, how's it going? Hey guys, it's actually pretty exciting. Um, this was pretty last minute for me being here. You know, it was like a decision that we took like about like five minutes, isn't it? Like, but um, I'm kind of nervous. Not gonna lie, I don't know. Uh, so I guess it's gonna be entertaining, and um, I'll try my best to uh, not be boring and you know keep on with the subject. So, uh, so elite. Yeah, I know Mario from Discord. Um, I know he's just pretty interested in this types of topics, so I thought I'd bring it on him on here. Sorry, and I I guess he he may be able to catch up. This was as he said pretty last minute. We didn't plan anything about it, so let's see how it goes. Of course, I have my script. I have my sources. Which, if you're watching this in a video format, I will have them listed down in the video so that you can check it out. Check out which sources I'm citing. Why is my opinion um influenced by and stuff like that. So. Uh, the first, what we're going to talk about, as you clearly saw on the title of this video slash episode, is women. I call it like that because it's something that's really catchy. So, um, also, <laughs> as Mario maybe doesn't know, this is messy features. Therefore, everything is messy. There's no structure. So, we're just going to be talking and talking and talking until we have developed a conclusion. And at the end, we conclude the topic. So, feminism. Woohoo! Uh, let's switch. Let's start the episode by looking up in Google. What, Mario, what's feminism for you? Like in short words. Feminism for me. Uh, I don't really know too much about the topic. I know it's a pretty popular topic. You know, I hear it. I hear that word for here and there, but I've never actually went into it and uh, what what it is too much. You know, uh, that's why like I was kind of interested to do it because you know, I want to learn kind of about it. But right. feminism, like what I've heard or what I've, if I can think of, is a uh, about I don't know um what women can and cannot do. If I'm guessing, I okay. have no idea. Yeah, great. I think you have a, a lead. So there's many people that define communism. There's definitions where I see mistakes the most. Miss the the most uh, like definition that I hear that I uh, feel it's it's my right to correct and I do it a lot is when people say gender equality because yes. gender equality is something that is very very limited when you say gender equality you just mean equal things between genders and that is impossible we cannot have equal rights because we have equal necessities I what I mean with equal rights I mean identical I don't mean that we should have different pays and uh, different job opportunities and stuff, but um, it is well, of course. Uh, there, why should men have a breastfeeding right, like a public breastfeeding right? That's a, a topic that has been very controversial lately. That w some women can publicly breastfeed their babies in some places, and some they cannot. And why will a man need it? There's no need. So therefore, I believe that com okay. feminism is more of a belief. If you're a feminist, you support the progression of women. Um, I also feel like um, it's just at, at a we, we try to get to a certain point or feminism is like the way into we get into a more I'm inventing this world, but humanism, because um, the whole point of human nature is to take humanity to modernity, to a better step, uh, to just to a better future. But we cannot do that when men and women are not the same like we have to bring them up if we bring up humanity and women are down well men will still be a little bit up than a little bit higher up than women so we gotta bring things to an equity or equity and then we can actually advance as a society therefore i think i believe in equity not equality i like the word equity so it's social, economic, and political equality of the sexes. That's how Google, well, uh, the Britannica Dictionary defines it. Now, I'm going to pull up an article. One thing that I hear a lot, I don't know if that happens to you, Mario, too, but I hear a lot that men shouldn't have an opinion on, on women topics. Do you think that's true? 
Um, could you repeat that once again, please? I There's hear, a I hear that a lot. Basic, for, like more on Twitter and TikTok, which are more of the social medias that have more to do on this. I hear yeah. a lot the claim that men shouldn't be having an opinion on things that are related to women. Do you think that's true? Yes, I've heard a lot, a lot about that actually. But do you do you believe in that? Do you follow that ideology? Um, well, I think that if they actually want to, like, you know, like, let's say, make a change, because that's what they're trying to do, right? Like, um, have their, like, rights and stuff, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like, better rights, better... Uh, yeah, if they want to do oppression. that, like, I think there's definitely some men that would support that and would want to get involved in that. So... I would probably say that they should let whatever man they want to, wants to go and do that, they should let them, you know, they should not say no. Because I know there's men that would want to help. Yes, you're totally right, actually. Did you know that we, you and me, are considered a minority, actually? Because there's less men and women. Less, there's less men than women in both Mexico and the U.S. Therefore, we are kind of a minority. So, um, I'm trying to, there you go. I try, I try, I was trying to put my microphone volume higher. There you go. Okay. So, oh. I feel like mine is lower. I have no idea. No, you're fine. You're fine. So, um, now that, um, well, now that we, we've basically gotten two opinions in that, I think that it's the best way to introduce our first source of the day, which is from medium.com. I've never heard about this website, but I think it's pretty cool. I did search it up for a little bit before actually signing it. So following uh, we since I couldn't invite a woman to the topic, I decided to get a source from a woman, of course. So that it, there's the bit of the feminine side of the opinion. Of course, no man represents all men and no women represents all women. Therefore, um, we're going to see this article called The Problem with Feminism Today which I have heard a lot of the points that she has stated, and we're going to discuss it. One of the first things that we already discussed is stereotypes. Um, she says, when you're asked about being a feminist, Mario, if you ask someone if they're feminist and they say no, what do you think about them? Um, all right, since, like... I don't really know too much about the topic, but if someone told me they weren't feminist, um, I would simply like, yeah, respect their opinion and stuff like that, you know. Uh, but I don't know. I just don't see. I just don't see what what's the problem of. Yeah, like, it's like why why wouldn't you? Yeah, I don't see what's what like what's the problem of like a woman um trying to fight for like what they want you know yeah right like, unless like they sh there's no point of not being feminist unless you actually have something against it exactly therefore we uh we can think like i i would be suspicious like what does this guy or girl does ha have a problem with feminism like why but if you hear someone's feminist there's no answer like i i would ask you what what do you, would you think if someone says yes but there's nothing to think because it can go from ah i don't care they can have their their equity if they want to from i am i go to the march and like there's even feminists that say they're feminists but i don't agree with you have seen them um people that are just so radical and so violent and make the um, the definition of feminism just break yeah there's a there, like there's a lot of people say that they're feminists, but like they're actually like in like in this world they're like uh, hurting um the me the whole meaning of like the movement you know they're they're doing the wrong thing but and like they say they're feminists so they don't do anything um I don't know if that's what you were trying to get like yeah exactly like yeah I could let's say I say I'm a feminist but. I'm doing something that's just avoiding the main purpose of what it's actually supposed to be doing and changing for the world. And I'm doing it for the worse. I don't know if I'm explaining myself right. Yes, yes, yes. You're totally right. I agree. Um, with Roxana Asami, who's the person who wrote this article, 
uh, tries to put yourself, uh, tries to put the readers on a mindset of being like, hey, um, this is how feminist has been developing. Therefore, so you can get into the head of, of like how a modern feminist will act like. And then she also explains what some feminists think. Well, some people that are allegedly feminists, because to be honest, personally, I won't consider someone feminist. Um, I will consider someone feminist that is in the, uh, that is agreeing in the belief of of gender equity, but still, um, you can be like there's other tags. Feminist, uh, feminist, it's only one of many tags. There can be um a rapist that's femi feminist and yeah he, he's a feminist he believes in that but he he will do crimes there can be a bank robber that's feminist he robs banks he believes in gender equity but he still does that so um let's talk about march um the the, the march the riots that have been happening i think um uh the the country that is more into that right now has been mexico since the adem the march 8 was some, something pretty big but um what do you think that here well at least uh, you're very involved with the mexican culture how do you think that if you hear feminism here in mexico do you get a bit of fear do you get a bit of like mm, you know what do you mean like fear of what like, like if you if you hear there's gonna be a feminist march like if you were pissed in mexico oh. and it's like there's gonna be a feminist march will you go back to your hotel or will, or will you be in the streets honestly i would be more scared if it was here in the u.s to be honest well true i would be way, I would be way most more scared if um let's say like not in the place that i'm living right now like here's pretty chill but let's say i lived in uh texas la florida Washington and they and they said that there was gonna be a feminist march. I'll be scared to go. I, I will be scared to go. But if I was in Mexico, yeah, it has its things, I know. Uh but I wouldn't be I wouldn't be too much scared. Nah. I wouldn't go back to my hotel. I'll be I'll stuck around. Like I wouldn't be too much in it, you know, but I would be around, yeah. I would be there. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be like too much sketched out as if I was in the U.S. Because you know what happened. Um, well, these, that these I, are big examples. I think like you're George talking Floyd. about like, yeah, that's Black Lives Matter. But I mean, like a feminist movement. I know. Well, but a riot is a riot, and I mean, it, it, like now they're doing riots about every everything, anything. Yes, you know? you're right. So like, since since so, BLM riots have been tending to get out of control since more. vlm rights have been normal like gays uh what happened what happened in the uh in the uh with the in the capit there. capital no yeah yeah the no, building it wasn't the capital the building <laughs> yeah that <laughs> you know rights have been kind of normal since blm and that's not okay yes so it's... that's why i said here in the u.s are really really sketched out you're right. Um, when I was thinking about U.S. riots, I thought Black Lives Matter. But you're right. Ever since the those riots uh, about last year, we have been just getting a, a huge. Well, I, at least me in the news, I've I've been watching a lot of uh, a huge wave of people wanting to revolt. And what many people see this as is as people speaking up, as society waking up. But I don't think that's the way it works. I have talked about this before. I don't know if Mario has is, is familiar with this ideology, but I believe that um, a society that is not comfortable with the government, it's a government that does not work, okay? The government can be bad, and that's actually something happening here in my in my town. The government maybe doesn't have, hasn't maybe, maybe hasn't done the best things. He probably has done some parks, some public works, changed the logo of the, of the police, but he hasn't really done as much as security wise or economy wise. You don't hear all about that, but he has done a lot to help the environment. Well, or so he says, um, but people love him. And when I get asked, because for some reason I, I, I am allowed to have a political opinion despite my young age, <laughs> So I get asked, what, which one, who do you think is better? As someone that nobody likes but has a good role, and I do, I do not agree with that. People are happy with him, with the guy who's right now, 
as I think it's major, how you call them. So like if people are happy with them, people are going to be able to agree with whatever. Well, with most of the things he says, because they're happy with him. They, they know he's a good guy. If they're sketchy about a candidate or about a governor, people are going to tend to disobey. And disobedience brings to chaos. And for example, what happened when, when, the, when the police killed George Floyd? People were mad. Like they, they lost their heroes. The, the police, the people who rejected them, was also killing them, was also against them. Of course, they were not all the police, man. Like that, that was awful. I, I saw people like in, in riots just blaming the policemen. Uh, which is like it was one guy there's bad people among thousands of good people and that brings me to a little bit back to feminism the riots that happened here in mexico and there was a problem with both the government and both the feminists that 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 participated in the riot mario do you, did you see what happened on march 8th uh no i actually haven't heard any riots of mexico well, um, I'm glad I have the opportunity to enlighten you about it. So there was, like, the day before March 8th, the government decided to go out, set up barricades in front oh, this of... this just happened. Yeah, March 8th. The, okay. the government decided to set up barricades in front of the uh, presidential palace. Before a riot even started or brewed they were already setting protection for the worst therefore people thought like i i think i don't know if you agree with me on this but whenever you set protection for something that hasn't even happened that makes people prepare both people yeah. that aren't participating and people that are participating it's like yeah it's like because you're just letting it know to the world. Yeah, that some shit's gonna go. Oh, <laughs> sorry, that, <laughs> something like, is gonna go. Is gonna go down. You know, like st stuff is gonna happen. Yeah, I know you're right. Yeah. Like, like whenever, um, like if 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 there's people that are gonna be participating in the riot, it's like, imagine I'm just putting a very comically exaggerated example, but it's like there's a there's a girl going outside, and it's like. What do I go for? Do I go for the feminist flag or do I go for the axe? And the other woman said, go for the axe. There's already barricades. It's not like you're going to actually hurt someone. So, like, if there's barricades, people are going to prepare for that. If there's going to be, exactly. if there, there's already policemen surrounding the place of the presidential palace, because, of course, they're going to go against the government, because that's how a lot of modern feminists think, which I don't think it's correct. So, um, like, if you go... And you're trying to protest, yeah, you bring your flag and whatever you bring to them. Yeah, you bring your protest, comments, right? You bring your... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you bring your you bring voice your... and your exactly. soul. But when you get there and you see, like, I'm looking at pictures right now of the Mexico, right? But when you get there and see all these policemen and all these things that they put, you're going to get scared and you're going to go want to get a weapon, you know? Like, yes, uh, that's right. Like, people like, are going to say, oh, there's actually, like, that's what the government also made a mistake it's like try to prepare but don't make it so obvious that you're preparing for disaster because this was the second time it happened the first time there was no protection and yes there was disaster but now you're putting disaster as something that's already going to happen like it you're like it's not a possibility anymore when you're already preparing for it so i think that also uh helped the riot get a little bit out of control <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I did get a bit of out of control. Uh, but now I I'm glad to to say that in the riot many things happened that a lot of of a feminist did split. When you saw those videos, you don't see a split. You see all of them going against all of them. There's a common goal, and that is to well, it seemed to be to dethrone the president for some reason, like. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit deeper on this on the conclusion, but as a feminist, you shouldn't be targeting a power or a person. You should be targeting a worldwide topic. It's not a regional topic like um, segregation, maybe, because there's places where segregation is like, it's like if we hear we're complaining about flooding, it's like it barely happens. But there's places like yeah. IT where 
man, they should be having flooding as their main priority. So, um, there's there was a split in feminism in feminism that day because there was something that happened. Well, many things happened, but one of the things that I remember the most was they just went there on the streets and they destroyed a car because they could. They were just marching and they saw a car and it's like, oh, let's destroy it. Let's let's yeah, because we're feminists. And many people didn't yeah. destroy the car. Many people just passed by. But they decided to destroy a car. Who which has a story? It was about a hardworking woman who finally managed to bought the car to buy the car and they destroyed it. What Full loss. What yeah, ex exactly the same thing. With targets. Targets. Yeah. What Walmart? Cars? Best Buy. Best Buy's <laughs> trucks. Uh -huh. like, like, I, I remember there was also something that happened here uh, not, uh, not so long ago that the government raised gasoline prices and there were people <laughs> entering stores and stealing TVs. It's like... And they, they started shouting, like, this is because the government uh, raised the price of gasoline. That's not going to do shit. <laughs> yeah. Do anything. Yeah. Do anything, it's it's so. like the, the, the business owners are just going to be as mad because it's like, what the hell does the TV have to do with gas? I know, like, they raised the gas, you're going to rob a TV. Like, what is that going to do? Like, the store <laughs> I know. is not going to, like, <laughs> I, I oh, they rob my TVs. So yeah, and the and the government is just gonna take it as a crime, and that's what people don't say, don't see. If like, imagine someone went on, and killed the president. A feminist killed the president, uh, and she says she's feminist. She's wearing a shirt saying "I'm feminist," and she says this is for feminism and kills the president. Um, do you do you think that the justice is gonna say the woman killed the president? For women, no. it's just gonna be a, <laughs> yeah. It's just gonna be this woman killed the president. Exactly. It's, it's not, he's not gonna say, oh, because she's a feminist. Uh, I'm not gonna press charges. We're not gonna put her in jail. Or exactly, or no. or anything. Even if they do put her in jail, they're not gonna say, oh, because in the name of women. No, it's gonna be a killing. That's the wrong message. Therefore, if you stand like. I'm take I'm talking about like what I consider to be a perfect riot. If you stand with a million people in front of the presidential palace here in Mexico and you just walk around it, no not even shouting, which shouting is fine, which protests, but not even shouting. Just walking and walking, walking and walking. And if someone approaches you, you just go there with them and say, Hi, uh, we're doing this and this and this. You just explain. You don't tell them you should join this because you have to as a member of this. No, you just explain what's happening. And maybe more people will join and more people will join. And what will the news say? The news will have no other like excuse than to say these people are representing their belief in getting uh, women into a more modern state, into a more equal state. Rather than the title being destruction everywhere feminism feminists take over uh don't go out of your houses says the government because feminists are out of control and that is not the image you want to give to people about feminism exactly that's what i was saying like there's people that say that they're feminists but they're doing bad things for the actual cause that they want to do you know for the actual message and yeah i forgot what i was gonna say but that was it uh so, yeah, look, here, they have, remember when you said uh, a, per, a perfect riot is to go and just walking around and explaining if, like, a cop comes and they're saying, what are you doing? Just yeah. explain. And that actually, my, that's a good idea because, you know, uh, the news and famous actors and famous people are going to say, hey, they're doing a good, they're not they're doing, doing it. They're doing change. Exactly, they're doing change. They're doing it with peace. They're not yelling. They're not um destroying things. They're not might be killing people, you know? Yeah, I and agree. they might they might give them money, like fundraisers or um 
I don't know, they might actually get help and do the change that they actually want to do. And you can only get that if you do it without violence. Yeah, exactly. And, and if and if they achieve like it. You're right. If you exactly. if they actually achieve to do something good, even if they don't get a single penny or a single change or a single regulation in the laws, next time they do it, they're gonna have twice as people. And every time it's gonna get less diff it's gonna get more difficult to just ignore what's happening. Because right now exactly. the government as bad as it may sound, it's just covering up with destruction, crime, um, vandalism. It's not actually covering it. Yeah, because it has other tax to cover it with. If you do something like I said, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, the government will have nothing else to say than to write in the history books. There was people gathering around, just showing up, being present, showing that they actually want to change. And that is what change. That's that is how change began. When I tell you Martin Luther King, do you remember his march? Do you remember the um, the no, the name of the of the articles that he passed? Do you remember the um, the 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 laws that were changed and how? They, no, most people when you talk about Martin Luther King, they imagine that black and white picture that they saw in their history book with Martin Luther yes. King in a stool. And at the bottom, it said, Martin Luther King, I had a dream speech. That's what people remember when you say Martin Luther King. You know, when I, when I hear Martin Luther King, the first image that pops into my head is a black and white image of him standing, uh, saying his, I uh, have a dream speech, and all the people, like, you know. Watching. Like everyone just just listening. Like, yeah, watching. Nobody, like, you listen to this speech, do you see a single person shouting, hell yeah, let's go. Or death no. to the president. No, they're all listening and nodding their heads as in, I agree with this man. I'm following this guy. And um, also now, well, now we, we, we have, I think, closed the topic on riots. That was a pretty good closure. Um, so therefore, yeah, yeah. They're, they're not achieving anything by achieving their, by violence. They're, they should be spreading a message, not um, doing something that's illegal. If they want the laws to change, First, they got a cop with the laws that already exist. And to be honest, security laws have, if anything, to do with feminism. Most security laws are, are the most, like security laws are the most equal. If you steal, you're a woman or a man, jail. If you kill someone, woman or man, jail. It's like one of the most equal systems, the judish, judicial system. And they decide to go against it. So yeah, there's uh we I think maybe we don't have a clear answer to what feminist riots can be, but I think that we did left a clear a clear point, and it's that what's happening right now it's just not it from the government yeah. and from the feminists. Uh, I know not all feminists are the same, but let's make a change. And the first change is change yourself, and then you can change the world, as a wise man once said. And wise man. And with wise man, you guys say, I, every time, by the way, Mario, you probably don't know this, but every time I say wise man, but I don't actually say who said that, it just means that it, it came up to my head, but I don't remember if I listened to it or I just came up with. So, yeah, that's what wise man means. So, oh, so every time you say something and you say wise man. Every time I say a wise, a wise man once said and then quote something means yeah. that either I came up with it or that I just don't remember where I heard it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, so now let's go to another part of the article that uh, did get me very, very excited. It was for feminism against for feminism against femininity. And that is something that we should acknowledge. Men and women are different. Totally different. Like some people might say, yeah, it's just the 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 it's just um, it's just the body. It's just the, the factions. They can change that. But no, there is many in the like in the nervous system the hormones and stuff they're different uh the organs are different they're aligned different women can have different troubles um the mm -hmm. most the most common one is menstruation um i'm not gonna go a lot of into that because we know i ha i know i have a, a young audience but there's a thing women have that is different to men and men have things that are different to women every single time and what is normally related to women is femininity. What do you think when you when you hear femininity, Mario? Femininity. Well, femininity. I think you know. Uh, 
or woman just you know the normal i'm like, gonna answer for you getting... i'm gonna answer for you yeah. it's pink uh pink flowers <laughs> Things like Best that. cancer, you know? No, that's not feminine. That's something yeah, women like, have. But okay. I know, but like. Oh well, yeah, but I mean, I mean the feminine the woman, stereotype. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like yeah. skirts, flowers, earrings, things like that, and yeah. um, maybe maybe brassiers, bra brassiers. I don't know how you call them, but brass. They are bras. Bras. They're they're feminine. They're something women use. Yeah, and bra. yes, there's movements against. They're like there's free to nipple and stuff like that, but it's it's I guess the, the the that's a point where people get to um to uh to an opinion because feel people feel like especially women that they are being categorized because of the feminine stereotypes, and stereotypes are bad to apply in real life, but they're good to have. If you if you want to go to Mex Mexico, and you ask you ask for stereotypes. Some of them are gonna be good. Like if if you, for example, whenever I uh talk to someone, whenever I'm on stream, by the way, twitch.tv slash elite gentro, <laughs> whenever I'm on stream, uh, and I mention the fact that I'm Mexican, it's like, really? Yeah, you don't see Mexican, and I'm fine with that. Like, there's even people in my chat who actually reply to this message. And it's like, what do you mean? I can get mad. I don't get mad. It is not something that probably people in the US see every day somebody from Mexico speaking pretty good English and having it yeah it happens but it, happens. it is <laughs> it is it is not something maybe they're familiar with especially my audience which is a bit of, a bit jong they, they 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 say you don't see Mexican and that's because they have a Mexican stereotype but it's not bad it to actually, have stereotypes huh it actually happened to me when I went to Mexico uh 2018 <laughs> because like for me people say that i look american i don't mm -hmm. really look too much of a hispanic and stuff like that but i don't know i don't know you know that's what people say i went to, i remember i went to mexico this is like a little story you know but it has to do with the topic yes sure. um i went to this little town that i like to go when i lived there to eat at this restaurant and um out of nowhere we're like we didn't say anything they automatically knew maybe the way that i was dressed my skin color because like i'm really white <laughs> i'm telling you like i'm really mm -hmm. white uh the way i don't know but they automatically knew that i wasn't from there and i came from the u.s because um they automatically spoke to me in english like and the, wow. the little things like you notice they automatically talked to me in english and i remember I, um there was Americans next than the table next to us and one of them went to the bathroom and I went to the bathroom too when he went mm -hmm. and he automatically talked to me in English like he could tell that I I was in quotation marks American and he just talked to me he was like hey where do you come from hi I come from Massachusetts oh cool cool and I got confused I was like I, do I really look like American like but I don't know. It was weird. It yeah, was, it, was, it was a weird experience. It, it was. It's the context, and it's the stereotypes that people have about people in America. For example, every time I go up to the United States, I, I will laugh a lot because my 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 dad, of course, has an accent, and it, they there there will be times where he starts speaking English, and the whoever's helping him will just go. I know Spanish, man, <laughs> so we just start yeah. laughing, and. Yeah. And it's it's fine because it's good that people like kind of know what the Mexican accent sound like because they can identify a Mexican and if they can help them by speaking Spanish, I'll be great. It's, uh, it goes for for many stereotypes. Stereotypes are helpful as long as you are sure that you're not talking to someone that gets offended by them or anything. Like, um, yeah, it's like if if someone's fat, you you don't say, hey, you're 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 unhealthy. You don't like your body or things like that you don't know yeah. for example like, hey, you need to go to the gym like you don't know you don't yeah know. you don't know maybe maybe they actually exercise but they're it's like a, i don't know for example my uh, i have a i have a problem called i've talked about this in the podcast before i have a problem called uh cholinergic urticaria which means every time i sweat i it it, it just burns i get urticaria which means i get a rash so it is very it it 
before uh, this happened, I was used to eating a lot. And then if I get a little bit uh, over the limit, I would just do a lot of cardio and sweat a lot the next following days. And I will probably go back to my healthy state. Right now, I cannot do that. I have to get, take care of my of my like of the things I eat more because I just cannot sweat it off. Like I can do exercises like weights, and I normally do dumbbells and some exercises that are not that are not related to me sweating, like walking and stuff. But I cannot do cardio as I used to do before. I cannot go and run five miles and come back because I just can't. It's a it's a condition. <laughs> so you don't never you never know what's actually going inside someone. But I will not get offended if I got fat. And because of this, I didn't, thank God. But if I got fat because of this and people would be like, hey, you, you don't take care of yourself. You should start taking care of yourself. I'll be like, yeah, fine. Thanks. Appreciate it. Because I, I could still take care of myself. There's probably not what they're thinking. But a stereotype never hurts to have. I just You, you got to have a little bit of common sense to use it. Therefore, a lot of women are going against femininity. Um, this is... Uh, I'm citing her right now. It says, ironic, even as many so-called feminists today actually shun all that is associated with the, temp with the term feminine. This isn't about rebranding, but about a reactionary self-loading of the female identity in favor of genderless monotony. Therefore, uh, what she means here is that they, women are trying to rebrand women. And I don't think that's okay. I think that uh, just by the mere fact of acting, of things changing women would be seen different and feminine things are still feminine like yes there's a there's a stereotype that barbies are for are for girls but men can have barbies the problem comes when a girl doesn't want barbies and you criticize her for that that's a problem it doesn't come when a girl when you give a girl a barbie yep like yep. there there's people that say why do you give her a doll the 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 fact that she's a woman doesn't mean she wants a doll no, okay, but you don't need you don't get to criticize for that. You get to criticize when they um when they don't want a doll and you criticize them for not wanting a doll because it's something women should have. Like I'm doing the the how do you call it? Like the quotation things in with my hands. You cannot see it. But it's yeah, like in... I forgot the name. But in quotations, I don't know. Uh so yeah, basically that it's it's just uh women are trying to rebrand women as pringles rebrands their logo women are trying to rebrand femininity and that is something i just not i'm not in favor of like why would you change the way feminine are stereotype you just if you want to change it by criticizing it won't work if you want to change it by you not getting a doll when you were younger and then your kid instead of getting a doll she gets um a telescope and then maybe all of the girls in her grade also want a telescope then the boys in the school will say hey telescopes are liked by girls and that's cool that's that's how you rebrand yourself like uh but yeah i keep going no but like keep going if you want i'll say right now okay so then um it's like companies companies don't get a new logo and then um start uh start telling anyone hey do you act I, are you still getting the are you still using the old logo are you still using the old logo are you still using the old image are you that old school no they get a logo they get into the stores people start buying the new logo they start differentiating between good between old and new and people are most likely to do it for the new that's how marketing works and that is how this should be working now what were you gonna say yeah, going back to the uh, the feminism, like why people um are kind of like not let's say I'm not saying this would like weird it out, not weird out, but like don't support it. You know, like there's some people that don't support it. It's cause like the Barbie doll, you know. Uh, on TikTok, I remember that I saw that men can go outside without a shirt on. You know, have you heard of this example? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, like men can go outside without a shirt on. Why can't women? There was a woman saying this, why can women go outside with their shirt on? And that is a perfect segue for our next topic. I was actually going to talk about this after this. So, hey. um, that is, I, I actually had a very short end. That was actually the short topic that we were going to cover. Um, society has an influence on women. And I was actually going to bring up this story. I remember I thought about this while driving. 
um, there was a guy on my debate class. We were debating whether women should be able to be uh, ha to have their breasts exposed publicly or not. And there was a guy who said, "You know what? I wouldn't mind." But he said it in such a neutral term. He was, I like, I respected that guy. I I wouldn't dare to say that to be honest. I, I just said I that. I wouldn't mind. Yeah, but he said I wouldn't mind. That's what he said. I didn't. I wouldn't mind the fact that women will uh, will have their breasts exposed. And everybody just said, "Bro, no, yo." Most of course, women. The the teacher didn't say anything. It was all the girls who said, "Bro, of course it was gonna be you. Of course." Do Do you think this is funny? Do you think it's gonna be funny? This is actually serious. And I was like, I I stood up and defended what? the guy. It's like, but that's what you all won. What? Yeah. Okay. Like, first of all, yeah. But no, that is a clear example why women don't have their breasts exposed because society has brought has has brought a, a sexual aspect to it. If you if I was talking to a woman without with her breast exposed, I would be uncomfortable. I wouldn't feel great. I I it, it's something off something odd i wouldn't yeah and people say you will be like yeah you will you will be you will be looking because you're a pervert i would be looking because there's something off i'm not used to that okay i'm surprised yeah. by yeah by, by what's happening at the moment therefore and and they they just made a quick example i said that i stood up and said okay you guys there, there's people here in this debate class who want to free the nipple and have women have the same shirtless rights as men but when a guy says he doesn't mind when he says one, you guys are taking him as a pervert. Therefore, you are not a, you you just don't get the right to do that. If you don't feel like uh if you yourselves don't feel comfortable by the idea of a guy watching that part, that's because society has made it an intimate part, something that you don't show, something that people normally don't see. And that's society context. That's why they don't have the same things as men because society has been able to develop um, a certain image to that. Yep. Yeah. And so it's been like that. And for them wanting to change it, like right now, that would be kind of weird. Yes. Cause, yeah, because like you said, I would be uncomfortable if, let's say, I was at the grocery store and the woman that was pay that's um, uh, putting my stuff on the bag or something, I don't know. Like, not saying that all that job is for women. <laughs> no. Yeah, I know. But, I know. You know. Uh. I don't know. It'd just be weird if, um, you know, that part was like there and covered. Yeah, it'd it's be uncomfortable. Yeah, I know. It's something that it's normally taken care of. Something that's normally not exposed. Something that normally doesn't touch exactly. objects. So yeah, if it it would just be very very weird. Um, uh, we're not in the society con. We're not in the context. We don't live in a society where that thing could be something that people will feel comfortable with. Maybe people actually will be no, okay no, with no. it. I, yeah, because there's people okay with it. Because you know the new yeah. speech. Beaches, yeah, there's you know, people that speeches. go there, and it's like that's that's fairly normal. But exactly. the, as we're talking right now, we have to be talking about a majority when we're referring to society. So yeah. that's just something we, that can happen. And we go back to the stereotypes thing. Um, if you guys want to change, I'm talking to active feminists. I am consider myself like I I consider me and Mario like feminists right now. Like I think we're doing our part by spreading this message message through this podcast. Uh, maybe not a lot of people will reach. By the way, you guys have to share this because I did tell Mario I did tell Mario that if this didn't reach twenty, 20 listens, people. yes, if this didn't reach twenty people, I was gonna I was never gonna invite him to the podcast ever again. So you guys better blow ah. this up. <laughs> <laughs> well, twenty people. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So. Uh, we go back to the stereotypes and rebranding and stuff. And with this, I conclude. I was going to use another uh, source, but the more the podcast evolved, I decided that I was basically just going to criticize it. It is called the International Women Development Agency. It's a N NGO, I believe, an organization against, um, against oh, well, uh, in favor of feminism and movements and stuff. Um, I feel like NGOs haven't been the best recently because what ngos do is they waste uh, they they spend a lot of their of their funds in publicity so that something can get big and finally uh just disappear yeah it's actually an ngo ngo i don't know if you know what it means but it's a non-governmental organization it's basically an organization that doesn't want, doesn't have to do anything with the government but does do uh things that are related to changing the way the world works. So yeah, NGOs, um, I think that the way to go, it is the government. 
the uh, the political aspect it is it, it it's the way to go it's a it's a thing to target but feminism is something about culture and uh by the way Mario, you can clap with this op with this closing quote if you want to but feminism is something about culture culture and the government does not uh does not make culture but promote it it is between ourselves to create culture and to embrace culture culture is a concept that has been evolving from time to time and every time there's words that are crossed out from the dictionary means culture has changed every time there's more laws added regards cyber security which means culture has changed therefore why not make our grandchildren say hey I'm the grandchild of an activist in feminism that stood there, was present, was one of the, let's hope, billions of people that pressured the government into modernity, that pressured our society into what was right now. Let's not force culture. Let's move on with the culture we got to build. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening to this podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed. Mario, what do you think? It was great. I actually liked it. I think it was good. You know, uh, it's what one of the uh, one of the what, three podcasts I've ever been. Uh, this is, I think, my third one. Oh my god, I you're a professional. <laughs> this is like my third one that I've ever done. Uh, I liked it. I think it was great. I think. I'm a, I'm a big bit proper to myself. I think I did good. I don't know, to be honest. You did great. You did great. <laughs> but let's get this thing to 20 people, man, because I, I, I honestly don't want to come back. <laughs> yes, if you guys want Mario yeah. back, share this episode. If you get to 50 listens, that would be awesome. I would literally do nothing. But if we get to 100 listens, <laughs> I would get, uh, I would probably get something set up so that uh, Mario can be here with camera and everything. Or maybe if we get 100 listens, we can also get more people in here, which will be awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I hope you guys great. enjoyed. Uh, remember, do you know the golden rules, Mario, or not? Go the golden rule? The golden rules. Golden rules. There's three. No. Oh God, you don't know them. Well, let's um for anybody that knows that needs a recap for the golden rules. Well, there's love your teammates and life is in the game, meaning that you you play video games, right? Yeah. Okay, in video games you have teammates, and the teammates are basically the ones that are with you, um either from the start or beginning of a game if it's like a story game, or from the start or beginning of a match if it's uh, a game that's played on matches or like that. So life, it's very similar to a game in that aspect. You have a beginning and an end of life. And every single person that you meet along your life is a teammate somehow. If that person in the restaurant who believed you were, um, you were American uh, hadn't approached you in English and hadn't had that stereotype of you, you wouldn't have nothing to tell. You wouldn't have that story to tell us in this podcast. Yeah. And if that story wasn't in this podcast, maybe someone that heard that podcast wouldn't be interested on it but just because you said that they would have been like oh wow i understand now so thanks to that he was your teammate at having at being at having you be such a successful co-host of this podcast episode therefore he was your teammate and there's always teammates there's bad teammates there's good teammates but you always have to give with them because you never know what they're bringing you to the future Therefore, you should respect your teammates in life as in the game there's more important teammates than others there's the one that just you see at the beginning of the game and then you never see them again and probably you will see them when you win the game like at the very end and there's teammates that are where they're the whole time with you and there's also teammates that just leave the game but where you would have hoped for them to be there the whole time but they just couldn't that's how life works and you should respect every single team that come across your view site just think about that way now the other two are are a little bit less deep there's respect nature, which because nature, of course, is the only thing that can take you here and the only thing that can take you out. It's the thing that brought you here and it's the only thing that can brought you that can get you out of here. And finally, remember to wear a mask. And well, there's I say there's three, but I always change the last one because it's either wear a mask, stay hydrated or do your homework. So there's a little bit something more basic. So you can do the five of them. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Hopefully it's, it's, it's sometime soon. And let's get this to 20, 20, 20 listens. Okay? Yeah. Okay. I'll see you guys. Um, 
later mario please say goodbye goodbye see i'll see you <laughs> maybe in the future <laughs> i hope to see you here in the near time future see you guys bye see you